Hey, welcome to Ultimate Survival Tips. I'm David. I'm really glad that you stopped by today because Dr. Joe is back. So here's the deal. After the Survival Kit showdown that I did with Dr. Joe, you guys wanted more. So we went out and shot two sessions for a topic that I get a lot of requests for. So what you're about to see is session one of two. Come on, let's get started. Hey guys, this is David with Ultimate Survival Tips and I'm back with Dr. Joe. Today we're going to take a look at some wild edibles. So Joe, why don't you go ahead and tell the guys what we're going to do today. All right, well, I was thinking when you asked me to do this, what do you need the most? Water. When you run out of water, that's what you're going to be looking for. Yep. So we want to do wild edibles around a water source. Okay. So we're going to be at a farm pond and we're just going to do a, a cold walk around, see what's there. Um, a few ground rules, if it's okay. Okay, yeah, ground rules uh, are good. Yeah, yeah. so it keeps everybody out of trouble, exactly. including I, me. I'm going to be overlooking, some of you experienced folks are going to see that I'm overlooking many food sources. We're going to be trampling on them, going right past them. I want to choose things that are very easy to identify, can't screw it up, I don't want to kill or poison anybody, and I want it to be easy and fun for you to identify some things that you can actually use easily. Okay. So that I like the ground rules. rules. You yeah. like them? Yeah. Yeah, no death. Awesome. No, no death today. Okay. Yeah. So you ready? Yeah, let's go. Okay. Like let's it. hit it. So this is the pond, Dave. Okay, cool. It's nice. Beautiful day, isn't it? So right. you got anything around here we can talk about? Yeah, lots. And as we said, we're just going to choose something. Okay. Uh, let me pick. Okay, here's one of my favorites. We're going to come down here and take a peek at this. Okay. The common name is Touch Me Not. Uh, its proper name is jewelweed, and uh, although some people differentiate subspecies as one or the other proper now, name. Now, can you pluck a little bit of that off? Yeah, let's just pinch this top off and bring it up. Bring so it up to the light. It. It'd be easy. There, there, we, there go. we go. I think it's we can got, see that I, I just think the flower is gorgeous. Uh, the basic uses for this, uh, the way I like it, when this goes to fruit, there's little pods, and inside it, there's multiple seeds. They taste like walnuts. Okay. They're fabulous. And the reason they're touch me nots, when you want to harvest them, you put your hand over the pod without touching it, then you squeeze and pull because it pops in your hand, splits wide open, and the seeds go flying. If you just touch them for fun, they can go flying three or four feet. Okay. But they're so delicious, don't, don't waste them more than once to see them spring. And they're really tasty, high in protein, good for you. Uh, the benefit to this right now some people say that God put it near where stinging nettle and poison ivy grows because you take it and you destroy this beautiful thing. You grind it all, you crunch it all up till it's nice and sappy and you rub it over where you got uh, touched. It'll decrease the sting, sometimes decrease the inflammation and maybe the response. At least that's okay. the folklore. I've had okay. a lot of people say it's quite helpful. Okay. So that's, that's my favorite because I, I like the taste of the nuts. Nice. Nice. Great. Okay, dude. That, that's really awesome. What else you got? Let's see. Well, the most obvious or walking right past would be cattails. Okay. Uh, cattails are great because you can eat any stage of them. In the spring, you'll get the small shoots as they're first coming up, nice okay. and juicy. Later, like now, this is something that when I'm out working, sometimes I'll just grab them and bite it off because it's got some moisture, a little bit of taste. You want to try one? I do want to try All one. Right. A little bit stringy because of the time of year, but you can imagine hungry, thirsty, pretty satisfying, I think. Dude, this is really, it's, nice. it's kind of like a stringy cucumber taste. Exactly. A lot of people say that. The tubers are more like potatoes, but this, a lot of people will say has a cucumber flavor. So how far up can I eat on this guy? Oh, you can eat the whole thing. The whole it thing. just gets okay. really stringy. If you want to floss your teeth up here, you can do that because it's edible. What else can we do? Can we like weave you a could, basket out of this stuff? You could. It's not quite as good as, field, as uh, pond willows, but... Okay. When these are compact and green, you can eat those. Some people will boil those up and, and cook them that way. So the, the thing about cattails is it's all edible from the root up at any stage all year. And that's why people love cattails for survival, because you can't screw it up. Okay. It just looks like a cattail. That's, that's it's a awesome. Cattail. That's important. <laughs> all right, let's Pond, keep walking. Um, I was looking for something, I'm sure. We'll... Oh, perfect. I love that. Okay. This is called cleavers. Uh, that's the common name. And the reason is, I don't know if we can get a close-up on this stem or not. It's probably never going to be close enough. But, Dave, run your hand this way, and you'll feel... Oh, it catches oh, you? it catches you. Yeah. yeah. It, yeah. It's, another funny name is called Sticky Willy. When you grab it, you'll know it's I think cleavers. this stuff has grabbed me before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the stuff. It doesn't have any strength of its own. It leans against the vegetation around it. That's one way you identify it. Okay. 
So this is it You'll right know here. when you grab it and it sticks to you and it looks like this pretty ferny stuff that can't hold itself up, okay. that that's the cleavers. Um, also called gooseweed. I think that's a more proper term. Okay. But the benefit of it, yeah, what do we the do herb, it's all edible. A lot okay. of people will cook it up or you can get the young, the younger the better. On all of these, the younger is tastier, the older is more bitter. But you can have that. You won't hurt yourself. So I could, I could just yep. break this off and chomp it Chomp down. on some. Tell me what you think. That's older. It's drier. May not like it. So just like that? Yeah. Pound chomp it. it. Just go. Have a nice time. Just pound Enjoy. it. <laughs> yeah. Tell me what you think. Yeah. yeah. Not as good as a cattail. A little stringy. It's, it's, it's bitter. Yeah. It is bitter. It's very, uh, it's very strong. Now, cattail... And this mix, Together. maybe boiled or something, maybe. would probably be with a, a hot, nice combination. With a hot sauce. Yeah. A hot sauce. sauce. <laughs> I love it. You know, I would carry hot sauce. You got something that we can turn into hot sauce. Uh, one other thing that won't help you in survival, but is just a cool thing. The fruit of this, when mature, has been used as a, a supposedly a very tasty coffee substitute. Okay. Downside of this. There is a downside. Too much of this, it's a diuretic. It means you pee out more than you drink in, just like coffee and beer and other things okay. do to you. So if you have this, you have it in smaller amounts and you make sure you hydrate well. Yep. Yes, you can live on it. Yes, it has a downside. Nutritional value. Why would uh, I want to eat it? It's gonna, basically, it's going to have some fiber, some uh, vitamin A, uh, a few calories. It's just going to fill you up as you're looking for other stuff. It's just that it's so abundant. When you get in a patch of it, yep. it'll be there. Oh, well, why don't we stop here? Uh, this is looks like the wild rose, uh, Rosa multiflora, that was brought in, not one of the best experiments we've done. They, they brought it in um, from Asia to try and make natural hedgerows, and it's kind of become an invasive species. Yeah. Most of the uh, farmers yes. curse the day they were brought over. Having said that, you can eat rose blossoms okay, uh, and the, the uh, rose hips. In the winter, if you lost them, vitamin easy C, right? to see, high vitamin C, and protein, because you eat the seeds too. So the best thing is in the winter, when you just see all those red berries against the white snow, okay. and there's not much else out there. You know, you've got winter green, you've got winter berry. It's pretty easy this. to identify by the what? Yeah. By the fact that it looks just like a rose. It looks like a climbing <laughs> rose that you're yep. going to get from your you landscape. And, when you, and when you grab it, it hurts. Yeah. Uh, flowers are tasty. Even your cultivated ones, if you don't spray your blossoms, whatever, you can eat them. Uh, you can make ice cream with them. They're, they're really tasty. Really? You sprinkle them on our salads to make them pretty. I am going to eat the next Lots rose. Lots of edible flowers. Yeah. Pansies. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Johnny any Jump Ups. Any rose I can eat? Uh, any rose, as far as I know. Okay, uh, as long as they're not sprayed. You probably don't want to eat the ones from Walmart. Do not eat any. No, I'm sorry. Do not <laughs> eat them. Sorry. <laughs> do not eat this. Dude, right. I knocked you in the last video on your Walmart survival whistle. So, mm, that's um, good point anyway, so I'm already, I'm already on the Walmart <laughs> bad list. Whatever. We'll be all right. All right. I like Walmart. I shop there a lot. You do. That's do. cool. So, uh, this, this is really old. So, it's hard to see what it would look like when it's younger and happier. This is curled dock, uh, and it's edible. You can take the young stems and eat them. Uh, you can boil the leaves. They're really bitter, so most people recommend changing the water a few times. Um, but, you know, this time of year, you can identify it because it looks like this big brown dead thing. Uh, okay. Earlier in the year, it'll look like this, but green, with some nice leaves. Yeah, so what, curled, what is this stuff? Curled dock. Curled dock, D-O-C-K, okay. D -O -C -K, okay. curled dock. Okay. So, um, you know. this is clover. Now, in general, now these are old dead clover blossoms, okay. right? Here's one that's on its way. So when it's nice and fresh and you got the big pink puffy flowers and they're yep. totally healthy, wonderful. I like it. It's okay. a little dry. Some people say it's more like hay than a real food source. It does have nutritional value. Uh, I like it. Okay. Here's the kicker. A Wisconsin farmer's cows were dying and couldn't figure out why. I think it was 1933 maybe. They uh, got these scientists working on this. Turns out it's how Coumadin, the blood thinner, was identified, was discovered. In combination with the unique clover blossom, the mold made Coumadin, and the cows were slowly bleeding to death internally. Oh, wow. okay. But when you're out eating clover and you're really hungry, you don't really want to have micro bleeds. So only eat fresh good looking clover. And so what do you eat on it? You can eat pretty much the whole thing? You can actually. But really, the only thing I ever bother with are the blossoms. The blossoms. Yeah, the rest is not very tasty. Okay. I, I like the blossoms. Down at the base, make sure to pick the green part, take the leaves off. Down at the base, there's a little touch of sweet nectar, okay. which is really a nice kind of dessert. Oh, nice. All right, dude, what do you got here? All right, so I knew I, I, I told you I wasn't going to just say everything, but I'm walking over something. We have to talk about it. 
Okay. Dandelions. Okay. Everybody knows what a dandelion looks like because when they lived in the city, all their neighbors told them to dig them up and, you know, the city got after them. So we all know what they look like because they grow everywhere. Just a question. Do they actually grow in the wild or is it more in cultivated, edges of cultivated areas? They grow absolutely everywhere. They are actually an invasive species. They're Full name is the European dandelion. There's almost nowhere you can't find dandelion. So did they bring it over as like a food source? Or uh, what and, was a, and a medicine. Okay. Uh, they used it many parts of it for different benefits, uh, t medicinal tonics, uh, the dandelion wine off the top. You eat the young leaves in the spring. Uh, they're very good in salad. The older they get, the more bitter they are. Yep. Uh, but the younger, the better. The flowers are edible. You can eat any part of it without hurting yourself. Most people will boil the roots though before they have it. Uh, take some of the bitterness out, and then often they'll save off the water as a tea okay. off the dandelion. Okay. So these will be really bitter and really nasty. I've uh, eaten those before. Yeah. So you want me to just to do it? I'll just do it. Well, I'll, I'll, eat, I'll eat the worst one. I'm okay. just going to get the critters off this one for you. Unless you need protein, I'll, I'll put it back on. Um, no, you did good. This is fine. Okay. You kind of look like a rabbit when you do that. I'm not going to tell you what you look like. <laughs> We've just taken a look at a few common wild edible plants that are easy to identify and prepare in a survival situation. For more information on wild edible plants, I've included links to three books that I recommend and a link to part two of the series in the video description on YouTube. Just click the show more tab under this video. So don't forget to subscribe to this channel. And for more gear reviews, survival tips, and survival news, check out ultimatesurvivaltips.com. While you're there, grab our monthly survival e-mag, like us on Facebook, and follow us on Twitter to get the latest news and be the first to hear about the great gear giveaway contests we have planned. Okay, this is David. I hope to see you on the other side, and remember, be prepared, because you never know.